Hey, I'm Lilika. So the first thing I want to cover is how long you spend studying. I myself fell into the trap of treating myself like a machine. I would study for six hours every day and I would just try to shove as much information as humanly possible into my brain. And I would feel like I was failing or not working hard enough if I didn't study for hours and hours on end. But as it turns out, that method of studying isn't actually very useful at all. I found an entry in a scientific journal that someone uploaded in 2017, I think it was. There was actually an official experiment ran on people's brains to try and figure this out. Their method was to take groups of people and they would have one group study for hour-long sessions and another group study for 15-minute sessions with breaks in between. They would put those weird nodes on people's heads to measure the gamma rays, which apparently correlates to their concentration levels. The result of the study was that the participants who studied for 60 minutes, their concentration only lasted for roughly 40 minutes before the gamma levels like really dropped off. And the participants who studied for 15 minute chunks, their concentration levels were restored after every break. They also had these participants take a type of quiz on the stuff that they had been studying and the results were that the people who took breaks in between did better in the test than those who studied in those long chunks of time. A conclusion that could be drawn from the study is that taking breaks in between your study sessions and keeping those study sessions shorter rather than longer could help you consolidate that information in your long-term memory. In my experience, it is important what you do in those breaks though. For example, going on your phone or anything like that would be a no-no and not a good idea because your brain is kind of like a kid. It likes short-term rewards and social media have algorithms that really, really prey on that fact. Picking up social media, you're shooting yourself in the foot because you're going to lose all your concentration and it's going to be really hard to get back into studying after you take your break. I would suggest rather going for a walk, just going outside, drinking a glass of water, staring at a mountain or a tree or something. That will really help your brain rest and your concentration levels kind of get up to speed again so that you can really go and tackle the next block of studying that you have set out for yourself. Another theory that you could implement in your studying is the theory of the curve of forgetting. A guy called Herman with a surname that I can't pronounce, he ran an experiment on himself where he would space out his studying and then test his memory to see how they correlate. And what he found was that there's kind of this curve that you can draw with an actual equation that represents how your memory consolidates and how spacing out repetition can help you remember something for the longest amount of time. Basically, your brain only remembers the information that you need to recall most often. So keeping it fresh in your mind will help you remember it later on. You can't just go study a, your textbook and then three months later expect yourself to remember everything as if you read it yesterday. That's just not how it works. So what this curve displayed was that you remember 80% of the information that you learned in say a lecture if you review it within 24 hours of hearing it the first time. The good news is, is that it's kind of a cumulative effect. For example, after a week, a hundred percent of the information can be remembered after just five minutes of revision. The strategy that I employed to kind of utilize this effect is a type of flashcard system. So what I would do is I would go and summarize my study notes and convert them into flashcards. Then I would have four boxes. I would have a box that I review every day, every second day, every week, and every say two or three weeks. I didn't even have four different boxes for every subject. I just put all of my subjects into each of these four boxes. And basically how it works is that you go through all of the flashcards. Every time you get a flashcard right, it gets moved up one box. But every time you get a flashcard incorrect, it moves right back to the start of the pile, no matter where it was in relation to the other boxes. For example, if you have a flashcard that is in this box and you get it right, it will move up to this box. However, if a flashcard is in this box and you get it wrong, it'll always go back to the start. This really, really helped me. A lot of people think that revising is something that you do last minute before an exam, but Oftentimes what happens is that you need to restudy all of the material and you end up getting a really, 
really wishy-washy surface level understanding of the concepts that you're supposed to understand very well for the exams and that will probably show in your marks at the end of the day. It is much better to properly study a material until you understand it and then use this flashcard system to keep it in the top of your memory so that all that hard work you put it in the beginning doesn't just go to waste and you have to redo everything at the end of the day when the exam is fast approaching and you're super stressed out and not really in the best place to be studying anyway. Rather put in the work when there's less pressure and just make sure that that work really stays in your long-term memory so that you can utilize it later on. At the end of the day, when the exams come, you'll be left with a lot less work to do and there'll be a lot less stress that you need to handle. And who wouldn't want that? Another interesting theory that I think could be useful to you is the theory called the dual coding theory. It's a theory that was proposed by a guy called Alan, I think it was Pavia, and it postulates that the formation of mental imaging can help you consolidate memory better in your brain. <laughs> According to Alan, there are two channels for processing information. There is verbal associations and visual imagery. His theory states that if you use both at the same time when you're learning, so you see what is being taught and you also hear it being taught to you, it'll help your brain recall the information later on because it kind of has two places to recall it from. For example, if I say the word dog, you'll probably either think of the word dog as in D-O-G written out or a literal just picture of a dog will pop up in your brain. And that's basically how this theory works. If you use both channels for processing information, both audio and visual, you will have two places to recall information from and that will make it much easier to remember later on. A great resource that I've used to kind of utilize this theory is YouTube videos. So I would go and watch Khan Academy. I watched so much Khan Academy when I was doing especially math and physics. You can go check out their website. Everything's there. It's very cool. They even have quizzes. I'm sure most of you have probably heard about them. Khan Academy was formatted and made for people who write SATs, which is an American standardized test, but I still found it very useful and the way they explain concepts can be used more broadly than just the SATs. Another guy that was really so useful to me in my studying journey was a guy called the Organic Chemistry Tutor. He has videos on practically any subject you could ever think of. They range from hour long lectures to a few minute long just videos and he explains everything very clearly with lots of examples and you can just tell that he really knows what he's talking about and that helps a lot when you're trying to learn from someone. The last kind of tidbit of information I would say was very helpful to me when I was writing my exams would be to write essays on things that you're learning. Now, if you're lucky, you're already being told to write essays for a grade, but if not, you probably have a lot of work that you need to do anyway, and it might feel like a waste of time to write an essay on something that you're not even getting a mark for. But learning isn't just memorization, it's also understanding concepts. And it's very important that you don't don't get memorization and understanding confused with one another. I, for example, could practically verbatim recall the theory of momentum, for example, but if you asked me any real questions on the subject, I wouldn't be able to answer them because I didn't understand what it meant. That's why essay writing could be very, very helpful to you. It forces you to put the subject matter into your own words and it forces you to grapple with the idea and it already help you to recognize gaps in your knowledge that might exist. Also, this could force you to go and do some of your own research to really flesh out the subject for yourself, to really get a more in-depth idea of what's going on. And that in Cambridge is exactly what they want you to do. So if you're doing your IGs or AS levels or even your A levels, then really fleshing out the ideas and getting an in-depth understanding is crucial to being able to answer any of the questions they'll put on any of the exams. So you're kind of lucky if you're a homeschooler because you can kind of do whatever you want if you're just working from home. So as a homeschooler myself, I was very lucky that I could just choose to rather write essays than take notes, for example. And if you have the option to do that, then I would really suggest you do. Writing essays is basically just thinking and if you then use the flashcard thing it'll help you to remember it long term as well and those two together are just it's just the best combination. 
All right, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope it was helpful to you. These study methods really helped me in my studying journey. And I mean, they really helped me to achieve a grade that I was very happy with in all of my subjects. So I really hope that they can help you as well. If you liked what you saw, if you liked the video, feel free to subscribe. I do a bunch of studying tips, especially for Cambridge on this channel. Please leave a like if you liked the video. Comment anything that you'd like to comment, whether that's just a statement or a question. I would be happy, happy to reply and have a little bit of a, of a chat with you. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Good luck, boys and girls. It's a figure of speech.